everyone is very familiar with experiencing stressful events in their life, stress occurs every day and comes in various forms. Stress from trying to juggle family, work, friends, and school commitments can be overwhelming. Stress can also develop from issues like health, money, and relationships. Do you know how stress impacts the mind and body? In this video, we're going to tell you about how stress affects your brain. The video is going to be amazing, so make sure you stick till the end. Before starting the video, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe to never miss out on any of our videos. For most people, stress is an everyday occurrence. Dealing with finances, hectic work schedules, childcare, and countless other responsibilities can make you feel like your life is spiraling out of control. Regular exposure to stress can impact our physical and mental health, but how does it actually affect our brains? Stress can lead to physical symptoms such as headaches or chest pain. It can also influence mood swings and mental health problems like anxiety or sadness. It can even lead to behavioral changes such as outbursts of anger or overeating. What you may not know is that stress can also have an impact on your brain. When faced with stress, your brain goes through a series of reactions, some good and some bad, designed to protect itself from potential threats. Stress can be healthy and energizing, but too much stress can lead to some serious long-term issues. But how can you tell the good stress from the bad stress? To understand why stress affects us, it's important to understand a little about how the brain works. In events of stress, your brain releases a steroid hormone called cortisol, which alerts your body to react instantly. This is often referred to as the stress response. Consequently, your brain goes through a series of reactions, some good and some bad, to protect you from potential threats. Scientists have discovered that stress has an impact on memory. It's not just that we have a lot on our plates and aren't paying attention. Research over the last few decades has shown that stress has a significant impact on how the brain processes information and stores it. Stress affects two crucial areas of the brain when it comes to memory, the hippocampus and the amygdala. These regions are linked to our ability to learn, process, and store short and long-term memories. The hippocampus is responsible for the formation of factual memories, while the amygdala is responsible for emotional responses. Under stress, the balance between these two regions is upset as stress weakens the hippocampus and strengthens the amygdala. This means that increasing stress in our brains will cause factual information to be overlooked by the emotions we experience. When you're under stress, your body releases adrenaline into your bloodstream, giving your brain bursts of energy. When under long periods of it, your body goes all out and releases a class of stronger steroidal hormones called glucocorticoids, which can remain in your brain far longer than adrenaline. Now, this is all well and good and can help you get by in tough situations, but when under constant chronic stress, these hormones can begin to have lasting effects. None of which are positive. When these hormones are released, they head directly for the hippocampus, the part of the brain that is involved in memory forming, organizing, and storing. When chronic stress occurs, these hormones become unbalanced, which can kill cells in the hippocampus and over time can lead to confusion and memory and learning difficulties. With the increased strain of the COVID-19 pandemic, wildfires, the upcoming US presidential election, and social injustices, some people are reporting feeling stressed about feeling stressed, Huberman told Altman. Huberman says people often describe this meta-stress, saying, I'm doing my meditation and I'm sleeping well, I'm eating well, why am I so stressed? People feel stress because the fight-or-flight response was designed to recruit almost all of your being, your mind, body, eyes, everything, in just half a second, Huberman told Altman. Meaning it's gonna be very hard to prevent the stress response from happening. So if our response to stress is hardwired and we cannot stem the tide of increasing stressors in our lives, what can we do? According to Huberman, using the body's own stress-relieving mechanisms may be the key. Huberman's lab studies what influences our stress response with the goal of helping people learn to use the parasympathetic rest and digest part of the autonomic nervous system to de-escalate the arousal of stress. The most common way that we've learned to turn off the stress response is to ingest food, carbohydrates in particular. When our belly is distended, it sends a signal to the brain that counters the stress response. And this is the essence of the parasympathetic response, he said. 
but pounding carbs isn't a healthy or practical way to counter stress, Huberman noted. Other stress management techniques like exercise, baths, massages, and vacations are wonderful, but we wanted to develop tools that people could use at the moment. Researchers are exploring other avenues to develop treatments for PTSD, an intriguing one involves non-neuronal brain cells called astrocytes. Long thought of as mere support cells, astrocytes also play a role in the brain's immune response. Megan Jones of the University of North Carolina found chronically stressed mice possessed elevated levels of a molecule called interleukin 1 beta IL-1 in the astrocytes of the hippocampus, a brain area critical to learning and memory. IL-1 is known as a cytokine, a class of molecules regulating the brain's response to illness. When Jones and her colleagues blocked the receptor for IL-1 and exposed them to chronic stress, they did not develop characteristic fear and anxiety. Many studies offer early clues to how stress causes negative effects and potential pathways to prevent those effects, and that is something that McEwen says should spur optimism that one day we'll be able to prevent the effects of chronic stress and PTSD. Also, 2018 participants agreed to undergo MRI scans so that the researchers could measure their brain volumes. This allowed the researchers to confirm that people with high cortisol levels also tended to have lower total brain volumes. Those in the high cortisol group had an average total cerebral brain volume of 88.5% of total cranial volume versus 88.7% of total cranial volume in people with regular cortisol levels. As for low cortisol levels, the researchers found no links at all between this and a person's memory or brain volume. Our research detected memory loss and brain shrinkage in middle-aged people before symptoms started to show. It's important for physicians to counsel all people with higher cortisol levels. Still, the researchers admit that their study does have some limitations, such as the fact that they only measured the participants' blood cortisol levels once, which may not be representative of their long-term exposure to this hormone. Stress after a brain injury can be even more challenging because your brain is now constantly under stress. Essentially, additional stress after a concussion is like adding insult to injury. Stress can trigger post-concussion symptoms, especially if you aren't managing your stress levels. Stress can make things like being overwhelmed, processing information, remembering things, and other symptoms worse. It's also an indicator that changes are needed to take better care of yourself and your brain, particularly because stress only adds to your symptoms. Understanding the effects of stress is key to understanding how to alleviate them. If you suffer from chronic stress, a good start is focusing on how to relieve that stress. This could be changing your lifestyle or incorporating some stress reduction techniques into your life such as exercise, meditation, or yoga. The double inhales of physiological sigh pops the air sacs called alveoli open, allowing oxygen in and enabling you to offload carbon dioxide in the long exhaled sigh out. This is a real-time tool that people can deploy anytime, anywhere to reduce stress, Huberman said. Synapse XT is a dietary supplement that works to maintain a healthy brain and hearing. Many people are not aware of the connection between the ear and the brain. Many hearing problems are with the brain because most of these problems begin with the brain. Therefore, a healthy brain will determine a healthy ear. Many pharmaceutical companies have come up with supplements that don't give the result that many people expect and some of these drugs create more problems for their users. Due to this, many people are embracing natural supplements like Synapse XT. You can buy Synapse XT as a dietary supplement through the link in the description box. Let us know your opinion in the comment section below. This was all for today. Hope you liked the video. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Stay safe and we'll be back soon with another video.